Alrighty, in this video I want to expand on the previous one a little bit, and it's more so for the reason of world transforms. So currently, the way that it was working was when we would hit play, it would spawn the cube, you know, on the socket that was basically just in a relative position because it was creating a relative or a component that was relative to this actor. That's why it worked, and that's why the positioning was just fine. However, as you can see, when I hit play now, I am spawning an actor, which is a cube. It's not a static mesh component. This is a dedicated actor, and it's spawning all the way over here. It's not spawning at the correct you know, position. If we look at it, here's the positioning of it. And this would be perfect if it was relative, but it's not. So that's the world position right there, whereas if it was a relative position to this uh, static mesh actor right here, or it would be about right in here, where, you know, where the socket is, right there. So that's what we need to fix, and I've actually already done that, and here everything is the exact same way, there's only some minor differences. So I want to kind of just roughly show you the difference. So first off, to show you that it does work, when I plug it in, and hit play, I have it set for that middle one. As you can see, it spawns the actor right there where we need to. So, what is the difference? So basically, the way this was working before was exactly like this. You can ignore everything I have highlighted. So we go through, we get the relative transform between our instance that we want to get and the socket transform. And then because of the z-axis being a little bit goofy, we have to take the z-axis from the instance as well as the socket, add those together, and then we have our new, you know, Z axis or Z position in the world in the space in our relative space. So if I hit play now with it like that, as you can see, it spawns to the top one. It's uh, it's kind of like one up, if that makes sense. So to resolve that, or sorry, let me rephrase that. To make this so that it works correctly and actually spawns, you know, on that stack where our sockets are, what we have to do is we have to take our transform that we got like you know the final transform we want to take that and add it alongside the actual instance so our main mesh which would be this bp building actor it's you know it's just the foundation instance mesh it's kind of like the root however we want to get that for the instance that we are trying to add so for example because i'm trying to get index one that would be this middle guy right there in the middle so that's how you want to go through and add that. So we take that, we add those two vectors together, we make a transform, and that's our new world transform that we can go through and spawn everything with. So how do we fix the Z? Well, we can just go right off the socket transform. So we'll just grab the Z off the socket transform, plug it right on in, compile, save, and now we're back on the middle. So everything is spawning exactly where it's supposed to be. So now really all I want to do is actually kind of add this as an extension to C++ so we can pass in a boolean to dictate whether or not we want to get the world transform or the relative transform, similar to how we do it like here by, well, how it's already done by default in this function. So to begin, let's go ahead and just add on top of this function. So we're going to add a boolean at the very end. Let's do bool... Uh, what was it called? World space? Yeah. World space. And I want to set it to false by default. And go to our .cpp. And here's where we want to start making the change. So here we have the relative, you know, location.z. And here's where we kind of also want to start making some changes. So if world space, we want to do some changes. And pretty much what we're going to do is we're just going to return the relative transform again. But we don't want to set that as the Z. Instead, we want to set the relative location.z to equal the socket transform dot get location.z. So that'll fix the Z offset. And then from there, we want to get that instance transform, which we already have and add it to it. So we're just going to add it to the vector because I don't think you can actually directly add transforms. 
So we have our instance transform that we want to get. And we have our, well, our current one. So let's go ahead and add those vectors together. So let's do f vector, world vector, or let's do world location equals, I want to get the, what was it called? This one's going to be the instance transform. We want to get the instance transform.get location. And we want to add on top of that the, uh, what you call it, the relative location. So relative location. And then we want to assign that to the relative transform. So relative transform dot set location. We want to set that to be the relative location. And then we obviously return it and go among our merry way. So what I'm going to do now is close down the editor give it a recompile and we can give this a test. Alrighty, let's open everything back up and see where we're at. So obviously this function got renamed, so I wonder if I can refresh. No, I cannot. So what I want to do is get instance socket transform and plug stuff in. So socket name, the instance component, and the index I want is the first one and pass in the return value. So this is currently gonna be in local space, so that should put it somewhere in the center, like so. I believe the Z height was off on that one, but I got not quite sure. Let's try the world space. Okay, so we got a mistake here. So when I checked the world space, that kinda of did where it was supposed to go locally. So I might have made a mistake here. Well, it's obviously clear I made a mistake, but I want to do another test real quick. So I want to add a static mesh component as well of the cube. And I'm just going to set that one to be that. So let's double check and see what the odds are that that works. Okay, so that one sets it there, which is at the wrong, actu actually at the wrong index. So if I uncheck world space, it's at the correct one. Okay, so we just have an issue. So let's check it. So what we're going through, we are getting the, okay, from the socket transform, we're using that Z axis for the make transform, which we are doing here. And then from there, we get the instance transform. We get that location and we add the relative location, which should be this guy to it. And then we set it. So relative, yep. So, in theory, that actually should be correct. So, let's try to do a check and maybe see why. Ah, I just realized I'm not getting the world space for the instance uh, transform. So, that would explain why. So, I'm not actually adding a world transform to it. I'm adding, technically, another local transform. So, if we look right here, that's our problem. So, let's copy that, and I'm going to actually pass in false just so I can make sure it's clear. So as you can see, the third parameter is world space. That's going to be false. And what I want to do is pass that. And again, we're just going to kind of reset it. Let's set it to true. So we're going to pass it back into the instance transform and, you know, do the rest. So now let's make use of live coding and give that another try. So I'm going to plug that back into the spawn actor, make sure world space is checked. And we should spawn, hopefully, nope, still in the wrong spot. So let's look at the details. We're kind of at where it should be locally. That's the really weird part. But that's not correct as well. So let's check out the static mesh component again. That should be fine. Let's see what happens when we tick world space. It just goes down a notch. So... We're not getting the actual, so it's not converting to world space for whatever reason. We're getting some weird transform out of it. So we got to figure out why. All right, so after a little bit of time and a lot of <laughs> frustration, I realized that what I was doing was I was setting the location back to the relative location. I was never actually changing it to our new world location like an idiot. 
So we want to make sure we set the location to the world location. And then we can try it. So I may as well go ahead and do live coding and relaunch or reopen up the assets just to make sure everything's good to go. So we're spawning the test actor. We're in world space. Everything should be fine. And there we go. So now let's test it with index zero. So the bottom one. That's fine. And lastly, the top. All right, that works just fine. Now let's try adding a static mesh component. So this will be using a relative transform. So I'll, I'll just start out at the bottom again with world space checked. This should not work, which as you can see, it does not. It spawns it over there because of the offset. But if I uncheck world space, so we're using it as relative now, it works. So let's just, may as well skip the uh, middle check and go straight to the top. And it works. So we are good to go. We have our functions set up. Now, the, the very last thing that I want to do to it is I want to have this set up so it returns a Boolean as to whether or not it was successful. So that way we can do a simple test without having to really do anything else. So I did a quick Google search on this to see how, you know, things like this are done where they output, uh, for example, a transform and a boolean so apparently that's due to it outputting a reference so what we're going to do is just at the very end here of our function we're going to add just a reference so a boolean reference of success and by default i'm just going to set that equal to false and i just realized because it's passed by reference i cannot do that so let's set that up like so, and we're going to set success by default to equal, well, let's just do uh, true. So by default, oops, success equals true. Then down here, before we return nothing, meaning, you know, obviously nothing's worked, we want to set it to return, or sorry, we're going to set success to equal false. So what are the conditions that we want, you know, this to return false with well technically we could do a check so if the socket transforms and empty is empty well then we want it to return false and same thing with the instance transform we would want it to return again false so here we can do kind of a bunch of different checks here so let's do a check so if instance transform dot equals F transform and we can really just leave the tolerance there it's practically going to be you know next to nothing so we can even look at it and just see roughly what it does and it's going to be kind of nested so i'm not going to bother actually i don't even know if you can do a normal comparison yeah i figured so we're just going to make sure it doesn't equal or an empty transform because if it does we want to re have it do success equals false and return an empty transform. I'm going to copy that, do the same thing for the socket, transform like so, and return it as empty. Now let's see, is there anything else? We pretty much are good to go. If we got this far, we should really, this should be no problem. We should have no problem running. And I'd say that is all we have to do. So let's go ahead and close this down, save everything, and give it a try. Alrighty, I made a mistake here, so uh, it wants it to pass world space in, or sorry, because I specified a default parameter, this is going to have to be at the end of our declaration, just like that. So let's go ahead and move this on over, just like, oh. so, there we go, now everything should be good to go. Alrighty, back in our class here, you can see the function call. So it now has a output pin and a transform. So realistically, the way we can do a check is let's just print it. So we're going to do a print string. And I want to print out the Boolean. So I want to pass in, we'll just leave it there because we know this should be returning true. So as you can see, it says true. 
And now if I pass in an index of something that we do not have, like five, we get false. So if we set that back to one, we can pass in a invalid socket name and have false as well. So now we have it set up to where we can easily do our checks to make sure, you know, what we were trying to do is in fact valid. So now that we have that function set up, we can dispose of our blueprint related stuff there. And I'm just going to leave this for the time being, even though I'm going to replace it here shortly. So we now have it set up so we can get a socket transform in either relative or world space for a specific instance on our instance static mesh component. So that is a very big help because if we didn't have that in any form, then how would we really be checking for, you know, positions that we want to specify? So for example, on a foundation, we may want to have four points for where a wall could spawn and that kind of thing. And same thing goes for the rotation. So what I mean by that is if we head over to the foundation, load up the mesh, let's change over this to the wall, like so. Let's bump this up. I don't remember how high I actually made it. So we would have, for example, one wall there. The other one would have a position like this. And the other one would be, you know, over here. And then the other one would be over here. So that would be kind of like the positions or the transforms of the sockets. So each one's going to pretty much have four sockets that we're going to work with. And because the instance static meshes are treated as a, inst as a single mesh, we should really only have four sockets being kind of having their transforms posted. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything that we have to do with that function. So now we are ready to continue, hopefully with some more fun stuff. Again, I really have no idea why something like this was not built into the class. So I may make an attempt to, I guess, make, I don't know how to potentially do commits or anything like that to the Git or the repository. But anyways, now that that's over with, I will see you in the next video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons, as well as you get early access to all of my tutorials, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down below, and I'll see you in the next video.